<laughs> Yo, internet, what's happening? Today, we got an S197 in that needs a little more life and excitement put back into it when you're driving it. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a pile of parts here. Maybe you can put it together. What we're gonna do to this car. Got here. Got a master cylinder booster, a pedal assembly, clutch line and uh oh there's a 3650 sitting over there yeah that's right this uh car's been brought to me to do an automatic to a manual swap and without a whole lot of research myself i'm not sure how many videos are on there but i figured who better to show you than this guy and uh i know what entails i got uh I'll tell you the differences and what you need to look out for as far as the electronic side, which you know I'm familiar with, because you need to get the right components uh, depending on what your car you have. So let's get into that just a little bit, because I just got this car last night, and I'm not sure where to start yet, whether take a seat, I'll do the pedals right away and whatnot, and uh, obviously the mechanical stuff with the transmission stuff is going to be pretty straightforward, r and a transmission and whatnot. So let's uh, let's talk about the electronic side while I uh, before I dig into this. Ooh. This car is a 2006. He's got his uh, computer. <laughs> got me a manual 06 computer. And so I'm gonna send this off to who I decide to. I'll, I'll let you know in a little, little caption there. So we're gonna get the paths deleted out of this because the person I was referred to told me that uh, you can't reassign a VIN or whatever to a manual computer because it's different, blah, blah, blah. So. We're just gonna delete the, the pads out of there and uh, that's what we need. So you need the right your computer. So as you may or may not know, the big differences in the early S197 cars and the wiring and electronics is there's two groups. Three, if you count the 2010s, we won't need to talk about them too much, but the 05 and 06 are different from the 07 to 09. Those are the main differences is there's two different kind of groups there. When we do this swap, it means we got to get the right wiring harness. The engine and trans harness are one one harness in the early 0s, 97s. Unlike the Coyote cars, um, Gen 1, they're separate. So what we got here is an 06 engine and transmission harness. So that's going to replace your battery cables, the fuse block connector, you know, there. I made sure that was right. Actually, my, my boy at... Uh, Mustang Lifestyle, or uh, as you know, as Andrew Sheridan. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if he's released it yet, as soon as it'll release this video, but uh, we got him set up with a Coyote Swap harness, and his happened to be an 06, and we, we got one for this car. Uh, he did have to use some connectors off of it, so I'll have to modify it to, with a speed sensor and stuff. So, gotta get the right engine slash transmission harness. So, if you have an 05, try and get an 05 because the inline connector is different than the 06. If you have an 06, you have to get an 06. Um, if you mix match, you're gonna have to just, you know, splice the uh, inline connector, which I might be able to see. It's usually by the, uh, yeah, here's an inline connector. So on the 06s uh, and 07 and up, they're this style. In 05, they're like a, a weird they're not going to be on this harness but it's a weird 12 pin connector that i can't find the pigtail for so you're just going to have to either um take the one off your auto transmission or your 05 whichever side you want or splice in the newer style if you have an 05 <clears throat> which i've done replacing a, a transmission and the engine harness on a car that was having issues here in the shop i just um used what i had on both sides either splice the old one or vice versa so Gotta get the right engine and transmission harness off the bat. Need. I'll show you. Talked about the computer. Obviously, we're going to a manual transmission. You're gonna need a clutch. My boy here, the customer is very smart. Get an exit, standard clutch. Um, but it looks like you got the wrong one because this is, <laughs> this looks like a 26 spline. And I know for a fact that uh, that transmission is 10 spline. I'm telling him that when he drops off the uh, clutch line little clips that you can't find together. Clutch, we'll go back to that little pile of parts. Got the plate, uh, clutch line, pedal assembly, very important. And 
he did get a parts car, so he just kind of gave me his parts, but I'm pretty sure I just need the reservoir off of this car, off of this. I'm not going to replace the master cylinder. Um, this might be Kaplan his car. I'm going to pop the hood and see. Um, he's got a, a her shifter, not the best one in the world, but better than stock-ish. He's got a whole bunch of, uh oh <laughs> a whole bunch of hardware. Got the bell housing bolts in there, drive shaft bolts, which you might not need because uh, probably reuse the ones out of that car. And of course the transmission, and this will verify the fact that, yeah, I knew this was a 10 spline. Also, this is the first time I've seen one of these shims on here. So I am gonna be really, um, I've never had to shim any of these uh, throw out bearings, but since that one has one in it, I think I'm gonna leave it in there for this. That'll help the pedal kind of release further up instead of right off the floor like you kind of run into. Uh, he said he had the drive shaft in the trunk, let's check it out. This should be one of the last main pieces. Oh, no, I got some sitting right there. So, who do we got here? Manual drive shaft. Kind of important when you want to do a manual conversion. They are different. I've tried. I picked up a couple years ago trying to put a... <clears throat> and I forgot it was an auto drive shaft in my old 07. Or my 07 that is Coyote swapped. And guess what? Didn't fit. Our ginger ale. We got a uh, slightly used flywheel. It might be... No, it's definitely been... Had a clutch bolt to it. And uh, that reminds me, I also need a pilot bearing, which I don't think he included in this. So we'll have to get a hold of him there. And then uh, I might actually have one. And then you need a transmission cross member. I wasn't gonna take any uh, wagers on if the auto one was gonna work or not. This does have the, uh, the bushing already on it. As you can see, one bolt holds that thing. So I'll show you what the pilot bearing looks like since we have parts here. Nope, those are electric. This should be a pilot bearing. Let's crack it open. So his crankshaft is not going to have this installed. It's going to be real easy since we don't have to remove, remove one. But yeah, that's the pilot bearing we're going to need. So I'll be able to hook him up with that. And uh, so let's pop the hood on this thing and see what we have to do. We have to do some firewall modifications for the pedal assembly for the uh, not only the clutch line to come through, but the the reservoir line. Okay, we got this thing cracked open. Looks like, uh, he was telling me about this accident. Uh, but if we look down here, this is usually where that stuff hangs out. I'm not gonna do it now, but I'm hoping I peel that back, find some grommets to pull, or just to, uh, we'll have to do some drilling and dremeling or something. So that's where the clutch lines and stuff are gonna come that. So looks like you can almost just like twist that off. So I'm not gonna do it now, but I'm gonna have the line hooked up last minute snip that and then hook it up. That's uh, the quick rundown of what we're doing. I'm gonna get a hold of them and get the right clutch and then uh, we'll get this party started. All right, so we got the rundown. First thing I'm gonna do, of course the seat doesn't move back and forth, so I'm gonna try and my best to get this seat out of here. So I'm gonna get my big ass in here, pull the console, get the shifter out of there and uh, kind of get some eyeballs on that uh, pedal assembly. I had the dash shot of these cars a few times but never just the pedal assembly, so I actually just did, between some shots, did some YouTube research. And I can already tell you right now, besides people getting it done and then telling you about it, I'm gonna show you more. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you as much steps as I think are relevant. Um, some people touched on the year differences, some people just worked around them. Um, I think it's important to get the right parts so you don't have to do splicing and all that stuff. So let's get the council and seat out of there and then I'll show you uh, what it's going to take to get the pedal out of there because people like already had it swapped and they're like, oh yeah, it just pokes through. So I was right on that uh, uh, portion of the firewall where there's like that silver matting. Um, it looks like they just jammed the, the lines through there. I didn't mention that they had to cut anything, so that's cool. I'm going to kind of try and peel it back, maybe look a little cleaner than I've seen. So let's get it after In order it. to get the council out, there's usually some seven millimeter headed bolts there in the back and then you just kind of pull up everything snapped in there. Biggest advice, yank the handbrake as hard as you can. It'll help you get it off. And the shifter, it's actually the first time I've had an automatic console out of here. Um, I already went ahead and you peel back. Mine, well, mine is garbage and is lipstick. But, uh, two 10 millimeter bolts, peel back both corners. Console's now loose. He's already got this apart. There's usually seven millimeter bolts there and there. And uh, yeah. This thing should all just pull out now. Don't forget these Johnnies. These are just snapped into. So take those off on both sides. 
put them there nicely. And then you should be able to get the console all the way out. There's some aftermarket switches and they'll disconnect, but that's that, that's that. With me is, uh, you guys probably have more experience than me, but uh, there's a little like shoehorn here that's keeping this thing from coming all the way out so I can disconnect from the transmission. Uh, so it looks like I'm just going to have to take the radio interface out and then uh, see what else might be blocking. If you're wanting to do this, like take a shifter out and put it back in, um, you definitely want to do it from the bottom. I was able to get the clips off there and I probably didn't have to take off that bezel. Automatic shifter is out, but now I can I can move this about from park and, and stuff without having to turn the car on and whatnot. So uh, now that's done, I think I'm going to go take a peek at the pedals. So um, before even taking a peek, got to get this bottom, I'm going to take that bottom uh, trim piece off. So which means uh, most of it's just kind of clipped in there. Take the instrument cluster. This is all just, all just clipped in there. You know, these are not crazy expensive cars. So that comes out, that's gonna come out. And then uh, there's a kick panel I might have to take out um, and see where those bolts are for holding this pedal assembly in. So yeah, there's the four there. And uh, gonna have to disconnect the master cylinder and all that good stuff. Well, after looking at the pedal assembly a little closer, did I have to take out all this stuff? Probably not. Will I get more light through there? Yes. <laughs> so, got the seat out. I'm gonna get my six foot four and five ass in here and show you what's up. So, it looks like there's two bolts holding that in up there and the four studs and nuts going to the firewall. Seems very simple. I'm very glad that this is how this is in because if this is a Fox body, it'd be a nightmare, I'm sure. <clears throat> so I'm gonna disconnect the brake switch. Um, actually, I'm just gonna take the whole switch out, disconnect the see the little the yellow clip there take that off and disconnect take the pin out um so you can see the big uh i don't know what side we're on now because i'm underneath there but let me get in here this is the head of the pin so we clip that off there's probably another clip there pull the pin disconnect it from the master cylinder pull this whole assembly out and put the uh customer provided clutch pedal assembly in so we we'll bring your attention here. Here's where your clutch switch is. So on automatic cars, this is how the clutch safety works. It doesn't, so it's looped. So this is where usually this harness breaks out and goes to the switch. And you can see it's red wires and 06 cars on the positive side. 0709 cars this is another one of those differences we're talking about. The clutch safety switch is actually ground going to the computer. So the computer on the 0506 cars never sees a clutch safety switch. Um, be, uh, it just, it doesn't look for that. And for cruising and all that stuff to work, it needs other different inputs, but, but I digress because I'm getting into coyote brain stuff. So the clutch switch will go plug back into there. You get a little jumper harness from the switch. Should be a couple in there because there's a top and bottom switch. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, Got two brake switches, so one's probably. Yeah, we don't need to get into that, but there's just two brake switches. One's normally closed, one's normally open. Till it's pushed, then they just switch. So, uh, let's see. In here, there's some some action. Oh, oh, what's that? What do we got here? Oh, look at that! That's where the pedal is gonna get smushed into us. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut that out from here and then uh, show you what that looks like on the new pedal. Take a look at our new pedal assembly here so that you can see the shape is very similar. So I got that insert out. I'm just gonna cut from the back side and have that push through. It's actually a lot easier than I thought. There's your clutch safety switch. Looks like the switches, the one switch is on there. I'm just gonna transfer them so that we know it'll work. And then this is actually the uh, part I was dreading the most. It's actually gonna be really easy. All right pedal came out it took a little course to get it beyond the uh the master cylinder rod and stuff but 
<laughs> they kind of <clears throat> fought back a little bit, but so getting that one back in there with the extra pedal might be a little tricky, but I'm still pretty pumped with how easy this is actually turning out to be. Because dropping the transmission stuff, that's that's light work, which is kind of weird to say. And that, that was that. I only have one bolt sitting there, but I can't believe how easy this was. I was dreading it. Seriously. That's uh, what I like to say, no big a deal. Obviously it's not sunk in yet. Booster's still blue, so yeah. That's gonna line up real good from our reservoir line, sharing with the brakes. And then once we get the uh, clutch line situated, we'll just snap that in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But it'll poke through. Yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna button that up and then uh, We'll kind of just skip over to the next step. All right, pedals are in and bolted in, all that good stuff. So now I'm just kind of working on the wiring harness transfer. I'm just going to get everything unbolted, unloom, probably take off a few line to, because the engine and trans harness are all one. So you literally have to go and take this whole engine harness off in lines, coils, fuel injectors, the whole works, everything going down to the oil pressure sending unit, you name it, it's got to come off because we're replacing it with the manual version. And then uh, after I get everything on top, I'm going to actually get this thing in the air and then start unplugging stuff that I couldn't get to from the bottom and then start removing the transmission. I'll show you some of the progress. Got the uh, mid pipe off. I didn't realize this thing had long tubes, so I started doing the harness. Got more harness things unclipped. Starter is out. Drive shaft is out now. Let me show you a little thing on the starter or the drive shaft and the manual one that he was giving me. Pretty sure they're the same. So I don't know what drive shaft I got well, like a few years ago to try and put my 07. That was from an automatic with the part numbers match. I don't know if that's just for this tube or what. There's very small differences, but when you line them up, they seem to be the same length-ish. Haven't put a tape to it or anything. This could be compressed. Like this is the only place that it really expands, so from here to here is solid. I mean, there is a, a little bit of a difference there. So that's probably where I was um, having issues a couple of years ago. So definitely gonna be throwing in the manual one provided. A few things that uh, other guys haven't shown on videos is uh, the uh, transmission lines you're gonna have to get rid of and just remove more mess. Hate dealing with fluids, but is what it is. Just gonna undo those lines and uh, should be able to sneak it out of there. Not remove them, and then I'll just remove them after the transmission's out of there. Probably take the nut off of the uh, motor mount bracket so they can swing away. And it almost looks like the cross member is the same too. Same one bolt holding it, so um, it is a little cleaner unit than the one provided. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, just reuse that. It's a little cleaner. So almost ready to drop the cross member and uh, get rid of the rest of the wiring harness that I cannot get to um, without the transmission being dropped a little bit. And just like that, 5R55 is out. Um, what did I learn here? That there's four nuts holding the torque converter on. We all knew that, right? Um, best way to get it is through that inspection hole in the block um, on the driver's side. Can't really see it from here. Cause the flywheel's holding it. They're blocking it right there. Get through all the nuts and uh, minimal, minimal fluid droppage. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Gonna delete those lines later. And uh, harness is uh, pretty difficult to get out. I don't know how you disconnect those without dropping the cross member and let that thing hang. So next step is to get rid of that flex plate and get rid of that intermediate plate, continue deleting this engine trans harness, 
And I'm definitely gonna feed the manual one through here while um, no transmission is in here. And then uh, get the pilot bearing installed. Then install the manual shield. And then install the flywheel. Clutch and pressure plate. Uh, I'll probably feed the clutch line through while we're at it. I want to do a lot before the transmission is put back in there that is uh, currently outside. So let's, uh, that's the kind of the meat and potatoes um, of the mechanical side of this. So um, I get to see a video, of course, I've, I've watched like three, four or five videos on the swap. Uh, I feel like this is important and relevant. To show you guys my experience. Most of the guys seem to uh, talk about it after they got it done. So here we go. Let's uh, keep getting after it. Flex plate and sandwich plate are off. Got the pilot bearing here ready. I'm gonna use this at 24 millimeter and socket to kind of drive it in there. And then put that manual transmission plate on the back of the engine and then get the flywheel stuffed in there. I got some bolts sitting around here somewhere for it and uh, put Loctite on those and torque them. All right. <clears throat> In my prior preparation of removing the engine trans harness, made this really easy. There is, uh, you could probably disconnect this uh, EVAP purge hose and this fuel line to get it out easier. I just kind of folded it and snuck it out of there. Uh, I do have to disconnect the brake booster T there, uh, otherwise it's you're not going to want to do it any other way. And uh, yeah, there's the AC connection down there, the starter solenoid connection down there, and the oil pressure sensor on the driver's side that you have to get from the bottom. Other than that, everything can mostly get it from the top, and then of course the transmission stuff, it'll all come out, fuse box out. Um, so now I'm going to work on that flywheel. Yeah. Pilot bearing in, manual transmission plate on. Flywheel's in and torqued, plate's in, Pile bearings in. Now we got the uh, the clutch to put in and the pressure plate, and then uh, everything is pretty regular after this. And then I'll start doing some wiring harness stuff and and get the clutch line in here. And I also threw in the uh, throw bearing in there. As you might have remembered, I there was a shim behind there, so I'm gonna actually keep it in there. It was on there for a reason. Uh, I've never had a shim, but uh, seeing that it's kind of a sign to me. <laughs> so yeah. If you, uh, it's all in clutch is pretty, pretty regular. I don't think I've ever talked on this channel, but using an alignment tool and, uh, you get the disc in there. This is probably backwards. So there we go like that. You hold it in <clears throat> and then put it on the flywheel kind of, and then you align that. And then the backside of that is going to align the clutch disc with the pilot bearing. All right, like I mentioned before, we got a, uh, a little bit of a chopped engine harness, but customer had a parts car that had an 07 manual engine harness. So it kind of hurt me to cut this, but is what it is. So um, not only did they cut off the speedo or the reverse, yeah, there's the speedo and the reverse switch. Also was one of the rear O2s. They just snipped it at that junction and so now I just got to splice a few wires so I've got all my stuff here you do that and then the mixture is going to go in all right trans harness is essentially repaired um if you ever have someone chop that off uh there's a lot of um gray with red tracer wires that is very common in the engine and trans harnesses that's a signal return for a lot of sensors and you don't have to make sure which ones go to which because they're all connected later in the harness so Let's, uh, let's pop that transmission in, shall we?
We like working on cars, right? It's fun. Boy, did I struggle getting that mixer in. Woo, but it's in. Oh, I think I thought I could uh, install it with the shifter on. Bad move there. I should really invest in a trans jack. But the thing I think that torqued me the most was <laughs> that the engine couldn't be, um, the header was hitting the subframe very quick, so it couldn't really like tilt it down. And uh, I didn't think I'd have to rotate it as much. We have to clock this thing almost 90 degrees to get it, the input shaft at least past the fingers of the pressure plate, then get it in. So then you can have enough room to swing the transmission to the, to the starter home back there that really gets in the way. And the transmission is physically smaller than the automatic. But uh, yeah, our extension, got our sp speedometer, reverse light plugged in, O2s, got a button up, clutch line got a hook up. And then uh, got to get the two top bolts for the cross member, tighten the rest of the bell housing bolts. And then basically from here, it's pretty standard. I won't have to show you guys. And then uh, I think we'll skip over to uh, when it's all done. And then we'll be ready to basically get the pats deleted out of the computer. And I already put it in. The manual computer is in place. And then this thing is just about ready to go. Drive shaft, blah, 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 shifter. Interior is easy, just the bezel. And uh, yeah. All right, obviously I don't, haven't done this swap, you know, in one sitting or day or whatever, but uh, mechanically we're all buttoned up besides the seat and the console. And let me tell you something that I experienced that really torqued my nuts. <laughs> um, this one with the clutch, there's a little leery of it the whole used parts and whatnot besides the throw bearing and heard horror stories of, you know, slave cylinders popping out, blah, 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 pump it, pump it, pump it. You know how you have to bleed these things 456,000 times. What I didn't show was I bench bled the uh, slave cylinder, but it's getting good pressure all of a sudden, pop. I was like, oh, wonderful. See brake fluid under the bell housing. I was like, good night. We get to take this whole thing back together or back apart. And, uh, but it was shim, so I was like, man, this is really weird. And I'm looking in there, it's like, oh, the line, the elbow that goes into the clutch or into the transmission slave cylinder, the line that clips into that elbow popped off. So it was like the one cent, like the, I don't know, it wasn't like seated in there correctly or it hit the firewall and like pushed it too far. All I know is, and then I struggle because now that everything's back up, it was really hard to get my big hands and get it on and brake fluids all the way. I was just like, oh my God, nightmare. But I was really pumped that that was it. It was a one set part that really uh, set this whole thing off. So now it's, you know, pumped it again, another 200,000 times. We got a good pedal. It feels like it's disengaging the clutch. So now I just gotta get the pads deleted and then uh, start the tuning process with Lido because um, this thing definitely should probably had a tune on the auto computer, it has long tube headers and uh, air rate intake much bigger than the stock intake. So we're gonna get that thing buttoned up and then uh, get in the air, run through the gears and see what it's all about. Make sure everything's hunky-dory for the client. And uh, yeah. All right, we got Tavo here from TMR Customs, is it? TMR Performance. Just TMR Performance, all right. He's gonna do the pats lead on this 06 so that we can get this thing uh, on the road. And uh, yeah, simple as that. Getting good. Yeah. Should be able to turn it on. Give it a crank from the. So it just the clutch. Um, just make sure it's a neutral. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Five shakes. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Ooh. All right. Success. <laughs> yeah, the pass lead. Car's running, so I'm gonna get in there, run it through the gears. Thanks to uh, Tavo at uh, TMR Performance. Uh, put a little uh, thing in the video there so you can, uh, any of you local Phoenix Valley area guys, he's uh, more west side, need uh, your pats deleted, does tuning and whatnot, LS, a little bit of Mopar and Fords. So uh, you can, you know, get your project done without having to worry about deleting. It was super fast. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing back in there, roll it through the gears. Worried when I, uh... We got it running and stuff. I tried just putting gear while it was running and it was just grinding. Pumped and pumped the pedal some more. Felt a little, a little more action in the pedal. Thankfully, 
So able to put it in gear. I'm just gonna keep pumping it and pumping it. And now I'm gonna finally roll through some gears in the air and then uh, start the tuning process since uh, it does seem to not care. I don't, that computer might have even have a tune in it for all I know for a bigger aftermarket because it's actually running pretty good for the few just minute sessions that I've had it running, but I still wanna make sure it's right for this guy. So uh, let's roll through some gears on this now manual swap S197. Just pushing the clutch. Whoop, still a little action. Yeah, so it might take a little bit for that to uh, leave itself. this episode i mean unless you guys want to watch the tuning process but we've been down that road plenty of times so our boy leto is going to straighten this car out and uh customer should be very happy we still got a he's got a shift knob and the uh, rubber boot for the uh the hole in the floor bringing me over today then i can put the console back in but that's super light work so if you liked our little guide here on to auto to manual swap your 05 to 9 mustang and 2010 uh, Please consider subscribing and like this video. We'll see you next time.